Welcome to another episode of CRK TV. Today we're in Tokyo, Japan, and behind these doors, something really exciting. Hi guys, it's Clinton here from CR Kennedy, and today we are at Zeiss Japan at the Central Business District in Tokyo. I'm here with Mr. Rato-san. I'm super excited because we have some new products here on show. First of all, Clinton, welcome to Japan. Thanks for coming all the way. It's a great uh, privilege to have you here. And also I'm very excited and thrilled to present you the final uh, production model of the Zeiss Nano Primes purposely built true cinema lenses for E-mount cameras. 18, 24, 35, 50, 75, and 100. All T15. And it also has the uh, unified clamp map box diameter of 95. So I think it makes a very attractive option to all these E-mount shooters around the world. And especially now with uh, smaller footprint lenses being so popular, definitely Zeiss are getting to that sort of market as well exactly. in terms of making things a bit more portable, more convenient. Just for good measure, I put a Sony FX6 body here with the lens mounted and look at the size of these things. They're tiny. I had the privilege of shooting with these a couple of months ago in Germany on prototypes. But now we get to see the full production models. Let's take a closer look at some of these lenses right now. Okay, Arato, we're sitting here now with the feature wall back there of all these famous films shot in Zeiss and how it transcends now into these nano primes. What are its unique properties and why? So this is a joint uh, project between our German HQ and our local Japanese suppliers who take their pride to make the best optics. And after years of countless meetings, visits, QCs, this is the fruit. These are all T15, full frame 35 cinema lenses tailored for the E-mount cameras. In a way, we can call these a mini Supreme Prime. What's so special about this is first, the size. This is realized because it has a very short flange focal depth design. Unlike the PL mount uh, lenses, we are able to make the external barrel and the lens roof very small. Yet, it keeps the T15 high-speed T-stop. Yeah. So I think it makes a very, very uh, usable and optically very pleasing bouquet mm. uh, when you shoot wide open. One of the things I have to say, though, about the, the Nano Primes is how it feels, how it's built, Standard compendium rings, what we refer to as the front, which is 95. 280 degrees of barrel rotation, which is not quite the 300, but then it allows you to fine adjust your focus. Exactly. But have a shorter right. throw. The helicoid design is also very nicely balanced as far as the uh, resistance well is going. Well yes. damped, yeah. So, um, look, I'm looking over here at an 18, and I'm taking a look over there at the Supreme Prime, which is an 18, and it's pretty amazing that you've still been able to achieve the T-stop on an 18 compared to the Supreme Primes over there as well, which is also an 18. So here we have the Nano Prime uh, 18 1.5 next to the Supreme Prime 18 1.5. Yeah. So here we see a drastic difference uh, by means of size and also the weight, you know, when you mm -hmm. touch it. I believe that these are 12 iris blades. Exactly. We implemented 12 blades and this provides a very round pleasant bouquet. And also, if you stop down to 11, you start to see beautiful sun stars. Mm -hmm. So if you like sun stars, especially on wide angle lens, low angle music videos, mm -hmm. you're welcome to do that. But also, because of these lenses are 1.5, you know, we encourage you to open up a bit and then enjoy the very uh, three dimensional separation of the subject from the background. I certainly saw that when I had a chance to shoot on a prototype. So yeah, very good point. And more and more, I also see how a lot of manufacturers particularly are creating a lot of threads inside the lenses as well. This is an 86, correct? Yes, good point. I'm assuming that many people use 95 diameter map boxes on this, mm -hmm. but in case you're flying drones or if you don't want some any 
uh, things. Bulky. Yeah, bl bulky in front of the lens. Yeah. You can always use the uh, screw-in filter. filters. Yes. So what you're really saying is that the fruition of all this is essentially the legacy that is Zeiss in the modernization that transcends into providing a product that are for users that are obsessed with image quality. Exactly. So all of us at Zeiss headquarters, and Japanese suppliers, of course myself included, are really proud to bring this today to you. Wonderful. So Clinton, now it's my turn to hear from you about the experience of using these nanoprimes. How do you describe uh, the look of these lenses from your experience in Germany? Wonderfully balanced set of lenses that has a clean, clear, crisp and sharp look. Great ability to resolve the pictures and images with balance of good compression and fall off. Mm -hmm. They give you a really nice blank canvas then you can paint with it in broad strokes and finer strokes. Right. It's very reminiscent of the Zeiss Supreme Primes mm -hmm. in miniature. Can I ask you what particular focal length uh, you like best or most frequently used? 50 mil was one I used quite a bit, but the 75 was my favorite. Mm -hmm. 75 is nice because you still get that compression but you're still quite aware of your surroundings. Did you go all the way wide open or stop down to five, six, eight? What was your, you know, let's say the playground? Most of the time, if I'm going for something textural, then I'll go wide open. The idea of shooting wide open is to, to really put these lenses through its paces and to see how they resolve. And then once again, 
you know, shooting wide open, they were still clean, clear, crisp and sharp. If I wanted to stop, let's say the T4 or T5, then it, depend, it was dependent on what I wanted to get in focus mm -hmm. as far as the image composition was concerned. I think these lenses provide pretty uh, usable MODs. Mm. So did you see any benefits of using, especially uh, the wide angle Absolutely. lenses? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a kind of trick or little nice thing to do is, is to use a wide lens and go fairly close. One of the things that stood out for me were the size of the lenses and how it's purpose built for E-mount cameras. You could easily use this on FX3 and then go to an FX6, FX9, or even a Sony Burano. Can I ask you about uh, how uh, did you uh, light Christoph's uh, kitchen and your approach and color design behind it? I had to come up with a concept very quickly in terms of how I was gonna best showcase these lenses and at the same time put it through its paces. If you go into any scene, you have to observe where your practical sources are coming from, then look at the color of the room and how light will bounce off certain surfaces to create that type of look. Because we didn't have a gaffer or a lighting kit, we essentially used what was available and there were several panels. So the way I would use those panels was more to do things like bounce, modify, feather and create washes to complement the scene. He had pastel colors in his kitchen, so I wanted to go for a specific look anyway, and that was to light everything via warm look, which is fairly tungsten. But because there was daylight coming in, I knew that if I was shooting tungsten, you're gonna somewhat be sort of mixing temperatures, but that was okay because I wanted those teal tones to come through as well. These concepts are very simple and very basic. As long as you're aware to not necessarily take a light source and point it directly at something, but to use light and also see how the lens reacts to the light. And that's super important. By also looking at the depth and the images that these lenses were producing, I could then work out what were the best ways in which I could shape the light to make sure that it looks great and it translates well on screen. On behalf of C.R. Kennedy and myself, I'd like to thank you for having us here. It's been wonderful to be able to witness the production of these lenses. It creates a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for people that want to get into the profession. And I think this is a definite step in the right direction. Thanks again, Clinton and the CRK team to come all the way to Japan. And I really appreciate your support and commitment uh, to this product. We look forward to cultivate this new market together. Thanks, Arato. Thank you, Clinton. And thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.